this year. Uh, I felt like a lot of the uh, coverage on me last year was dominated by Finn Balor. I was getting a lot of questions about him, so I've distanced myself from him entirely this year. Uh, he had a big influence on me early on in my career, but not in the last uh, recent history. Sorry, I was expecting another question. Um, last year, you uh, this was this was as far you, as you got in the tournament. So we've seen amazing performances from you, in particular at the Progress Super Strong Style 16. We, we've seen a change in you. What is causing this, and, and do you think this is going to push you on to go further in this year's tournament, and obviously face Pete tomorrow? Um, what has been the catalyst for this resurgence for me was the pain of going out when I did last year. Uh, in the manner I did. Um, I make no secret about it. It was one of the most painful uh, experiences of my career. I was really disappointed with my own performance. Um, so it really lit a fire under me to go on to bigger and better things and go on and win the whole thing this year. Uh, James from Gorilla Position. Uh, I was just wondering what it means to you both uh, to be performing in the Royal Abbey Hall tonight, one of the most famous venues in the world. Being a mod, seeing the people have performed here, the Who's performed here, Well has performed here, so for me to be able to walk in the footsteps of some of my idols means the world. I know that WWE have performed here in the past, and I think a lot of people will say that, and they will talk about the greats that came here before. But for me, it goes beyond that, it goes beyond wrestling. Music informs my wrestling, informs my style, my look, and I'm just really excited to perform here tonight. Yeah, and for me it means a lot as well. Um, I feel like I have the weight of a whole nation on my shoulders being the only Irish representative, but it's good pressure, you know. I've gotten a lot of uh, tweets and, and calls from home showing their support. Um, as Flash said, it's great that we're finally back in the Royal Albert Hall after nearly 20 years. Uh, it's a really historic and prestigious venue, and I'm looking forward to getting out there and doing my thing. Uh, Kenny from the Daily Record. Flash, obviously Jordan last year was in the tournament and he kind of went out earlier than he'd liked. Um, what do you think your advantage is, and do you have an advantage? You know, he has a point to prove, and you're coming in fresh this time. I think I have an advantage because if you go back and watch the tournament last year, you'll see me in the crowd. Um, I wasn't medically cleared; I was still on the sidelines from an injury. So, being on the outside looking in, I've said it many times during the interview that a lot of people want this, but I need this. I've spent the last 18 months traveling the globe make an impact on every promotion I've gone to. And now I'm on a world stage. I'm going to take every opportunity that comes my way and I'm going to make sure that the last thing people remember is Flash Morgan Webster. Hi guys, Stephanie Digital Spy. Um, Flash, have you made any adjustments to your style for the WWE and for this tournament? I made uh, adjustments to my style after I came back from injury. So I, would, I used to take a lot of risks. I still do take those risks, but not as many anymore. So now that uh, I come back, I do a lot more stuff on the floor, so there's a lot more submissions. But my style has taken me, as I said, around the world, and I've been able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the best. So to change my style now, to change the thing that brought me to the dance, I think would be silly. So I'm ready, I'm confident, and tonight Joan Devlin is going to get the best Flash Mogul Webster we possibly can get. Uh, John Jackson, by the way, from TalkSport. Um, so obviously, you mentioned your change in style. We've seen Jordan doing some amazing high-flying stuff uh, at some of the indie shows we've seen here. When you approach a match like this, are you looking to sort of just put on a great performance, or are you looking to take those risks and potentially put on an amazing performance and really steal the show? I don't do anything for no reason at all. Um, when I go out there tonight, every movement, every action I take will be uh, we're getting the, the three count round. There's no waste of motion, there's no showing off for the crowd. It's to get the win in this tournament. I think, personally, I'm going to win. If I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it with all the style that only the mod father can bring. Um, can you both pinpoint a, a moment growing up when you knew you wanted to do this for a living and you had that dream to chase? Do you remember seeing a, a favourite match or a favourite superstar? For me, it's not really a single match. I come from a small Welsh village called Brumau. If you go back and look at the history from that town, I come from the same town as Adrian Street. 
So growing up, I would hear about this exotic, flamboyant character that went from a small mining village where nobody leaves, nobody follows their dreams. Everyone kind of stays there and people are told that they're worthless. And I remember hearing this guy who went out and chased his dream and I was just inspired by that. So when I fell in love with wrestling and hearing as well that this, this icon came from my own town, it just lit a fire under me. So like Joan said, he has a whole nation behind him. I'm exactly the same. But I also fight for anyone who's ever come from a small town and has been told that they can't do this and they shouldn't do this. Yeah, um, for me, I think the first time I realised I wanted to do it for a living uh, was the first time I came down to the NW Ireland school. Uh, my mother thought she was signing me up for collegiate wrestling, like in a, a ring on the ground, and walked into this uh, school hall in Bray County Wicklow, and there was a full-scale professional wrestling ring set up. And she tried to pull me away, and I was like, oh, oh good, I want to I do this. And I can still remember like, the smell of the hall, and taking my first bumps, and just totally and utterly falling in love with the, the sport. And uh, I don't think I missed a training session for about six years after that. It was just all I thought about. Uh, Jordan, obviously last year you were in the tournament, like we mentioned, and can you talk a little bit about the last kind of year, year and a bit of you know being in the tournament last year and then coming back and being in it again? Because a lot of eyes are on you because you've you've done this already, and there's maybe more of an expectation from you now. Yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of um, expectation. I mean, especially I think I'm the only person from last year's tournament that is still in this year. Um, I don't know. I felt like I had a lot of, a lot to prove after my performance last year. Um, so I went back to, to Ireland and I set my focus on, you know, being the main, the main guy there. Um, I got around England and the independent scene in England and tried to do my best to climb the ladder there. Um, I think coming into this tournament, I'm one of the hottest properties in European wrestling. I think I'm the most underrated wrestler walking the planet right now, to be honest with you. Um, so I'm looking forward to surprising a lot of people with what they see this year. British wrestling scene apart from the American independent scene? Um, it's hard to say really. I, maybe the, the fans probably are a little more um, enamoured of wrestling. You know, you get shows now on, on Tuesday nights with three or four hundred people crammed into a little bingo hall in the middle of nowhere to see wrestling. It's a really special time in, in uh, independent wrestling in England. Um, as far as the, the sports entertainers go, I think everybody um, at all levels has a really solid technical base um, that helps them with their, their performance in ring. Um, so yeah, probably that, the fans be the main, I'd say. I, yeah, I have to say, I, I agree with Joan there, it definitely is the fans. Um, as I said, I've travelled around the world, I've wrestled in Finland, in France, in Reseda, which is renowned for having some of the best fans in the world, but none of them compare to the fans here in Britain. I think that the wrestling here has always been top class, in the last couple of years, especially the internet, the big boom of the internet, the fans have been able to find that wrestling and almost build like a community. And that community is almost like a football now. Like they, they support their own football teams. And I think that that's allowed them to kind of talk about wrestling, follow the wrestling, and for us to be showcased for the great styles that we actually are. Uh, do you have a last question? Just uh, for me, how do you think Pete Dunn has, has, has done? as the, the sort of kingpin of the, the division over the last year or so? I think he's done very well, but I think he's had very few challengers as well. He's held the title uh, very dominantly. Uh, he's represented the British wrestling scene very well. Um, but as I said, he hasn't come up against anybody really that's going to challenge him like I will. I've known Pete for eight years, so to see him grow into this bruiserweight, into this United Kingdom champion, it's been an absolute pleasure but along those eight years, I think that if I go back and look at it, I've definitely racked up more victories against Pete Dunne than anyone else in this tournament. And not if I win, but when I win this tournament, I'm making sure that I walk up night two, you're new, WWE United Kingdom Champion.